Praise the Lord. Thank you for the good singing and the orchestra. We'll let you go back to your seat tonight. And I'm going to ask you, if you would, please, to take your Bibles. And uh, we've already heard from our young people, and so we'll go right into the message tonight. Take your Bibles and turn with me, please, to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. We'll start here tonight. I've just uh, been burdened the last several weeks concerning this matter of our relationship to the Lord personally. And I would say uh, knowing God is really the theme of this journey that um, I believe the Lord is awakening me to a little bit more here recently. Now, I'm not saying that in any way like I've got some sort of inside information or uh, something mystical, but knowing God, I think, is something that... In our lives, many times we accept something that's less than what God has for us as the potential. And knowing Him is, as I mentioned last week, not knowing about Him, but knowing Him. Um, And I, I, I believe we find that the will of God for us as Christians is for us to know Him in all of His revelation, what He has revealed Himself to be. Let me bring some thoughts here this evening. Uh, I'm going to pray and ask the Lord to help us and uh, settle our minds and our hearts, and then let's look into the Scriptures tonight. The theme, really, the burden of my message tonight is simply the question, how can I trust God? How can I trust God? And there's a lot of different scenarios that we could apply that to, but I believe there's three key factors. We're going to look at those tonight. Let's pray together and ask Him for His help. Lord, we pray tonight now for Your just your, your meeting with us, a little bit of a different service, Lord, a different feel, but we're grateful for the fact that we can come together, we can uh, seek you, we can understand your word. Lord, I pray that you'd calm us, help our hearts and our minds to be attentive, and our ears to be receptive. Lord, we know hearing is a lot different than listening, and I pray that you would help us to be listeners and obedient doers of your word, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. My question tonight, how can I trust God, is often born out of a situation that we find ourselves in where we do not understand what God is doing. Um, When very bad things happen to us or people around us, it can be difficult for us to see really the the heart of God or we oftentimes can lose sight of His goodness or His plan for our lives. Maybe you've been there. Uh, something tragic has happened, something difficult, something hard. And you ask yourself, Lord, why? And and then you you begin to say, I know in all of my doctrine and all of the teaching, I know that I need to be able to see God in this. I need to know what His purpose is. But oftentimes that's clouded. It was Spurgeon that said, uh, I believe when when we can't see His hand, we need to trust His heart. I believe there's a lot of truth to that. And what I'm going to talk about for the next few moments, I believe, is a critical answer for all of us to have in the very beings of our heart. In other words, when we come to the situation where we find ourselves desperately seeking to know and understand and know God, sometimes we get a little off base. We get a little bit of question. We get a little bit of concern and doubt. And I want you to understand that there are three rock-solid truths tonight that need to undergird and support every aspect of our lives, so that when we're in that situation, we can't see what God is doing. You're never going to understand completely God's, His plan, and I mean by that, I'm never going to understand why He moves in certain ways. We're never going to understand it. But knowing His character, knowing His, His, His nature, will help us to be able then to see not necessarily the circumstances and understand them, but the God who is behind the circumstances. And if you can get your eyes off of what's going on around you and get your eyes off of the, the emotion or the, the tragedy or whatever it is and get your eyes on the person behind that, that makes all the difference. And so we ask ourselves, what is God doing oftentimes in our life? Or I can't see what possibly can be good that comes from this. If you remember back in Daniel, the three Hebrew children, and they were put into the fiery furnace 
And before that, they stood before the king and they made this comment. The king says, I'm going to give you another opportunity to bow down. And the men said, king, you can give us another opportunity, but we're not going to bow down. The God that we serve is able, well able to deliver us. But then they said this statement, but if not, we won't bow down. Here's what they were saying, church. They were saying, we're in a difficult situation, and I can't understand why God put me here, but I'm trusting that there's a God in heaven, and that God is someone that I can trust because we know who He really is. We know Him. And that that confidence in Him will not waver whether He chooses to deliver us from that circumstance or not because our confidence in Him is secure. We're finite, and we cannot see the entirety of the matter. We can't comprehend the whole picture. There is no way for us to be able to see the whole picture of everything God's doing through all the ages. Did you know that? All we can see is a very narrow part of what we call our life. The Bible calls it a vapor, just a four score and ten, or three score and ten years that's just a vapor. And yes, of course, everything that I want in my life, I want it to go smooth and well, and I want to understand everything, and I want it to be start to finish everything that I understand, but that's not the way God works. And so we need to be able to look at God and understand who He is. God, on the other hand, is an infinite being. And He can see all that is going on and how it works together for His purpose and glory. Everything at one time. Many things that God does, we will never understand. This side of eternity. We are invited instead, not to understand everything He does, but rather to know His nature. And He tells us to know who He is. Hear me tonight. Here's the the burden, church. We need to know who He is so we can trust what He does. Can I say that again? You need to know who He is so you can trust what He is doing. Now, what I didn't say tonight is you need to know what He's doing so you can trust Him. That's how we love to uh, live life, isn't it? Mom and dad, they make a decision and the kids don't understand. Dad, I don't understand why I can't or why I have to. And we don't understand. And I... The, the calling, and this is for young people tonight, the calling is not for you to understand, the calling is for you to obey. Now, if you know mom and dad love you, and if you know mom and dad have the best in store for you, they, they want what's best for you, though we're not perfect, it's easier to trust what you don't understand to someone that you know. And that's what it is with God. If we're going to come to a situation that is difficult, and we all will, we're all going to face this. You're going to come to a situation you can't understand, and it doesn't make sense. As a matter of fact, it can be downright, it can feel downright offensive. We can feel downright betrayed by God. We can feel that God doesn't have our best interest in mind. Somehow He's forgotten about us, or He's rejected us, or somehow He's kind of taken His hands off. But I'll say tonight that if we know the God who is behind it, then you will understand you can trust Him despite the circumstances. That's the key, church. That's something that we need to have as a Christian, growing in our trust for God. Many things we will not understand, but if we know Him, we can trust what He's doing. Don't seek to know always what He's doing. Seek instead to know Him and what His character is. Anchor your soul in your mind and your will and your emotions in that truth. And may I say tonight, if you are anchored in the truth of who God is, you will never fall. That's the promise that we understand from His Word. And I believe tonight even knowing Him then leads us to knowing His will. And that's a blessing. Sometimes it's impossible for us to know His will in every given situation because we can't see it clearly. But I know who God is and I know I can follow Him and I know I can trust Him. And so we faithfully take one step and by by the time we know it, we can look back and say, oh, I'm right where God wants me to be. Not because I knew the end and I patterned my pathway after that, but instead I trusted the person who was leading me. And I didn't know the way. I didn't know the next step uh, or or the the, the steps down the road. But I just followed him step by step. And I look back and I look around and sure enough, here I am right in the will of God. Can I tell you, that's the kind of thing that we need to have, the kind of relationship we need to have. So in order to process things correctly in our lives, and by the way, a lot of our life is processing the the, the circumstances around us. The filter of processing God's trust, our trust in Him, the the way He is working, is to always be constantly set on an immutable and eternal truth about how God works. I want to tell you not what He's doing, but oftentimes how He works. These are the the three truths I want you to see tonight. 
These undergird and support all else in our lives. They're at the basis of the way that we think and the way that we process and the way that we even feel. And, and how you come to hold these truths in your life, church, hear me tonight, in your mind and your heart will greatly determine the success that you have and that you experience in your Christian life. We may not always understand His plan, but we can always know His nature. You may not understand His plan, but you can know Him. That's the, that's the key. So can I give you these three undergirding truths? And after, as I give them to you, you're going to like, Pastor, I already knew that. <laughs> but are you believing it? And is it experientially true in your life? Number one, the bedrock truth that we need to understand, to really to undergird everything that we know, and, and, and knowing His nature, God has revealed something to us very important. And that is, first of all, that God is love. Now turn with me, if you're already there in 1 John chapter 4, you've already um, turned there, but look at verse number 16. Now John speaks much of this, verses 7 and 8, let us love one another and, and all the things, but look at verse 16, it just says it very plainly here, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. Now, church, I'm not telling you the new thing tonight. But can I tell you tonight that if you realize the nature of God is His love. I didn't say God loves. Now, He does love. But I said God is love. Tonight, church, understand that God in His very nature is a God who is love. We could say God is light. We could say God is holy. God is righteous. God is um, exalted. God is eternal. But God tonight in every way is love. Now I cannot emphasize this to you enough. When we come to a circumstance that we don't understand, the first thing I have to go through or go to is that bedrock. And many times I don't even think about it. It's just got to be the, the, the natural default is that God loves me. God loves me. God is love. God is love. And learn that that would be the absolute default of your thinking. Don't ever question the love of God. You may question His plan. You may question uh, His purpose. You may question how He's guiding you. But don't ever question the love of God. Why? Because that was established years ago on the cross. That was expressed to us in all clarity. In the Bible, we have every indication that God is love. Not just indication, but example and promise and revelation. Listen, there is no way that we can mistake the fact that God is love tonight. We have believed and known the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. I'm grateful tonight that we can be confident in our stand and our understanding that God is love. How confident are you in that tonight? How quickly do you default to that thought that God loves me? That is the truth. It is undeniable. It is unquestionable. So when I come to a situation that is hard, and I don't understand it, and man, it seems like God's forgotten, or He's abandoned, or it seems like there's something that's off. Listen, we've got to be undergirded by the fact that God loves us. And because of His love, then that means something to you and I. It's not just that's nice, He loves me. Loves me. No, when we realize that God loves us, then we come to that understanding that everything that happens to us comes from a heart of love. If you know God loves you, I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. Whether something is difficult, whether something's hard. By the way, even God's chastening comes out of a heart of love. The Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and correcteth the son in whom he delighteth. Listen, uh, the fact of the matter is, even the chastening of God is his love for us. Everything God does for you, every situation, there's nothing in this world that you will experience that doesn't come from a loving Heavenly Father. Now you could say, it doesn't feel like that. My circumstance is different. It feels like God doesn't love me. Because your understanding of God is based in your convenience. It's based in our ease. It's based in our life that we want to have rather than what we understand God is. Even when I can't understand God's plan, I can trust His nature that He is love. 
And church, that's what I'm saying. Come to that conclusion. Settle that. Get it down in the very bedrock of your being. God is love. And God loves you. Circumstances may be challenging to understand and to navigate. But God's show of love to us is so clear and plain that we would never, we should never question it. God is love. And it doesn't matter. that Nothing changes God's love for us. He can't love you more than He loves you now. He can't love you less than He loves you now. Yeah, but pastor, what if I mess up? Can I tell you? He still loves you. Does that mean we have liberty to mess up and just do whatever we want? Obviously, no. We love Him. If I I love my, my wife, my desire is to her. If I'm secure in that love, that's wonderful. That doesn't give me license nor desire to go out and and, uh, be unfaithful or whatever else it might be. Rather, my love constrains me to her. And the idea is that when God loves us, Paul said that's the constrainment that we have to Him. Listen, it's not that we are of duty or obligation, but rather it's the love of God that constrains us. Oh, learn to love and revel in the love of God. Learn to understand it and to to just uh, rest in it. And and that love for God will constrain us and it will encourage us in days when we don't understand it. And by the way, God loves you so that His way is always best. It is always right. It is always good. And His commands, obviously, you know, if, if we look at God's commands, if He loved me, He wouldn't, you know, be so restrictive. That's what we hear from carnal hearts many times. Man, you know, my uh, Christian life is just so restrictive. I can, I can, I can, I have to, I have to, I have to. Listen, the very commands of God are given because He loves us. You know, he says, okay, go back to the marriage illustration. He says, listen, I'm going to give you a husband or wife, and they're going to love and cherish you, and and it's going to be a a time you're going to grow together, and you're going to become one flesh, and it's just going to be a wonderful relationship, and it's, it's great, and so don't commit adultery. And so be faithful to her or him. Why? That command is based in that love that we're to have. And the same is true with every command that God gives us. Because I am, and because this is the way it is, then we cannot do this. It's the love of God that is the basis of His commands. Even His commands are based in the love that He has for us. God's love is perfect, it is complete, it is whole, and it is absolutely what we need. Revel in that, rest in that. When there's difficulty, and I can't understand what God's doing, rest in His love for us. Deuteronomy, I'm I'm thankful tonight that we can see it also in this passage. You don't need to turn there, but listen as I read Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord require of thee, the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and His statutes, which I command thee this day, then the last three words, for thy good. In other words, I've given you the commandments and I'm asking you to do all these things. Why? Because I want what's best for you. May I tell you tonight, friend, everything God tells us to do, everything we learn, every principle that's given is for God's best. It just is for God's best. And yet we find ourselves questioning Him many times or feeling like that doesn't apply to me. I think I know better. No, God's love is best. His way is best. When I can't understand, I trust His nature. He is love. Number one, bedrock of truth. God is love. Number two tonight, I'll just give you the second bedrock, I think, of this truth. How can I trust God? Number one, no, He is love. Number two, God is all-powerful. I told you it wasn't going to be revolutionary tonight, but I hope it'll apply in a new way. God is all-powerful. You know what that means? He can enable you to accomplish His will for your life. He can accomplish anything He wants to, and when He calls us, He will enable us to do exactly what He wants us to do. God will enable. He loves us, and He enables. Now, let me just give you some truth concerning this tonight. This attribute of God is called His omnipotence. He is all-powerful. Excuse me, did I, leave, did I give you God is all-powerful? Okay, good, that's it. I'm messing up in my notes, but that's, it's in there. God is all-powerful. Now, this omnipotence is simply the idea that there is nothing outside of His ability to accomplish. Nothing. There is nothing outside of the ability to accomplish. It's shown in things like this. The Lord Jesus told His disciples, they said, uh, after He said, it's, 
impossible, uh, or it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into heaven. And he said, Lord, how can these things be? I mean, it's, it's impossible. And God says, with men, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Now, that, that's not just a nice cliche. That's not just a nice hope. That is an actual fact. With God, everything is possible. He is absolutely powerful. He is the God that created all things out of nothing. He created everything from nothing. I had a conversation on my bus uh, a couple weeks ago. Some boys, I think I told you about it, but they were talking about how this world came into being. And they, they said, well, you know, there was a little particle that exploded. I said, where would the little particle come from? Well, it was a little bass. Well, where would that come from? And before they knew it, their poor little seventh grade minds were just, Poof. there was nothing. And God created what we see. Now, you tell me tonight, I, I think sometimes we underestimate that. If God could create the very world that we're living in, and, I mean, create it in such a way, I wish I could go through it. Every time I start talking about this, I want to learn more about the, you know, the science of life and, uh, you know, everything. Everything that works together to make us live and breathe and make this world do what it's supposed to do and all the laws and everything. If God can do all that, and we have a hard time trusting Him when we don't understand something in our life. Now, I'm, not, I'm not belittling that. I'm saying... Church, it doesn't make any sense. If God can do all these things and create all that we see, and the glory of the Lord is seen all around us, and not just even in, in spiritual matters, but in creation, if we can see all that God did, man, why can't we trust Him in things we don't understand? Why can't we just lean on the fact that He is all-powerful? He, he not only created all things, but the Bible says, and by Him all things consist. That is, He didn't just create us and let us go. He didn't just spin this thing and got us moving and then took His hand off. He is literally holding things together. And I believe tonight that we can trust Him because He is all-powerful. If He is who He says He is, then surely we can trust Him to provide for us what we need to accomplish His will. I love 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Faithful is He that calleth you who also will do it. I love the idea in 1 Corinthians 15, Therefore, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What is God saying? I will enable you to do what you need to do in life. You say, Pastor, I'm in a situation I can't handle it. You know what? That's a good place to be. I'm not trying to be cute tonight, but when you get to the end of yourself and you get to the realm of the impossible, that's where God can start to show himself to you. When we get to the realm of the impossible and we say, this is overwhelming, you know, pastor asked me to do such and such, or you know what, I need to take this step of faith in my life, or whatever it might be. Listen, tonight, don't ever feel like I can't do something that God wants me to do. Don't feel like I can't go where God wants me to go. Don't feel like I can't give what God wants me to give. Don't feel like I can't witness where God wants me to witness. Or I can't teach where God wants me to teach. Or whatever it might be. Don't ever feel like that, my friend, tonight. Live on the bedrock of He is all-powerful. And if He's all-powerful, He's going to equip me to do what He wants me to do. All I need to do is be willing. That's it. And by the way, as a church, we need to collectively be willing to do what God wants us to do as well, even if it's impossible, especially if it's impossible. What kind of a church will we be if we're simply living in the realm of the possible what we can do? It'll be nice for a little while because it's comfortable, but you know what? The next generation is going to raise up and say, we didn't see God at all. All we saw is a lot of people doing a lot of hard work. And there was no God involved. That's not the kind of God we serve. May God help us that when we get to situations that are impossible, I'm talking about whether they're maybe uh, whatever, you name it. Each one of you have a different scenario you could put in that blank. But if you get to that point, listen, that is the point where you can learn to say, I may not understand why, I may not understand what, but I can understand who. I can understand God. Why? He's all-powerful. How can I trust God? He loves me, and He's all-powerful. These things make all the difference as we begin to process what we're looking at or what we're going through in our lives. Isaiah 46, verse number 9, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. What's he saying? Hey, I see the first and the last. I saw from the ancient times what was already going to be happening at the end. I know all of these things. I, that My counsel shall stand and, and I will do all my pleasure, 
Verse 11, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass, I have purposed it, I also will do it. Who else can say that? James says you shouldn't say, tomorrow I'm going to go in such and such a city and buy and sell and get gain. No, he says rather you need to say, if the Lord will. You know why? Because we can't affect that at all. All we can do is plan, but God proposes. God is the one who purposes. So if God says it's going to happen, my friend, it's going to happen. Because He's all-powerful. We can trust Him. When God leads people to impossible tasks and impossible circumstances, that tendency then is to question the love of God or His plan or His purpose. But instead we should realize that it is leading us to trust Him for the resource to accomplish what He is calling us to do. May I ask you tonight, this is universal by the way, is He calling you to forgive? God can do that. With man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. Is He calling you to further your obedience, to take the step of faith? He will equip you for what you need. Is He calling you to leave that place of, of comfort and convenience And to step out in faith, knowing that He's called us, don't step out in presumption, but always step out in faith. And if God has done it, be confident He will do it. Because He's all-powerful. All right, number three. Number one, God is love. Number three, God is all-powerful. Don't these things just undergird the truth? Going through anything, how can I trust God if I don't understand? It looks like He's abandoned me. I I don't know how God can let a good thing, or excuse me, a bad thing happen to a good person like me. You know what? I get it. But if we can't follow His plan, we can know His nature. And His nature is He loves us. Number two, He is all-powerful. Number three, very similar, He is all-knowing. He will never lead you astray. Now, we're, we're very cautious because when a person knows their limitations, fear sneaks in. Kids are naturally fearful. Most kids are naturally fearful of that which is over or bigger than them. In other words, if they come up to a precipice, most kids have an innate fear because they realize I'm vulnerable here. It's just an innate instinct. Now, some kids didn't quite get that. (laughs) Or, you know, they've been led to believe otherwise. You know, you're invincible. You can do it. You know, it's like, no, you can't. So you get this idea that, you know, there's an innate vulnerability in all of us that God puts, I think it's part of our survival instinct. And so that translates into some things. And so we feel like we attribute to God what we, what we experience in other people. People lead us astray. People tell us wrong. People will, for willful reasons or for unknowing reasons, they'll lead us astray many times. But God never does. Why? Because His omniscience, that's the, that's the doctrinal word, omniscience, His, his all-knowingness, There is nothing outside of the knowledge of God. Now, I'll just illustrate. When I say, you know, uh, okay, kids, tonight, uh, this is not a promise, Anna, but I'm just using an illustration. Uh, Tonight after the service, we're going to go get ice cream. Okay? So, hypothetically, (laughs) we're going to go get ice cream. Okay? It's snowing out, but we're still going to get ice cream, whatever. So, we're going to go get ice cream after the service. Now, you know, hey, oh, it's so exciting. That's wonderful, wonderful. After the service comes... A change of plans happens, some thing I didn't see, whatever. Sorry, kids, we can't go get ice cream tonight. <sighs> now, you would foresee something like that happening, right? That's not outside of the realm of possibility. Many times we've promised and not fulfilled or we've intended, but we haven't been able to accomplish. And so, you know, things happen. And so we kind of get this human cynicism about life. Now, we still expect, and if we trust somebody, we'll do it, and we try to make up for it, whatever. But we just know that there's an innate sense of, we just, we're not sure if things are going to happen. Now, the reason those things happen, church, is this. Hear me tonight on this, and I'm going to be done. The reason things happen like that is because when we make a promise, there may be things outside of our knowledge ability or our knowledge capacity. We have no idea. And there, there are. There are things outside of our knowledge capacity that will affect that decision. So we are incapable of knowing every scenario. We're incapable of knowing every angle. We are incapable of establishing a path that is absolute and secure because we can't possibly know all of the contingencies. Are you with me on that? So to the best of our ability, we say, 
we're going to go do this or we're going to do that or whatever. And we say that because we understand that we have limits to our knowledge and our understanding of the situation. Can I say tonight, God does not have that. There is nothing outside his bounds of knowledge. In other words, every contingency, every angle, every scenario has been, and I'm using this term, humanly speaking, considered by God, and he has established the best path, which is only good because he loves us. And not only that, he can establish that path and empower us to walk that path because he's omnipotent. Now I'm just saying, church, this is the very nature of God. That's why it doesn't matter what you're looking at or what you're experiencing. It doesn't matter if it's worse or not as bad as someone else or if it's the worst thing I've ever experienced or it seems so bad to me. It doesn't matter because if you know the person behind it, it anchors your soul in trust. And you can trust a God that is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and all love. That's the God we serve. And so he knows all of these things. If he is yours and you are his, there will never be, hear me tonight, a command that has not been considered from all angles and found to be perfect. That's why David could sing in the Psalms, Lord, thy law is perfect. Lord, your commandments are right and just. They are sweeter to me than honey and the honeycomb. Why? Because they're based in the all-knowing mind of God. They are founded on the principle of God's power that is absolute. And they are filtered through the knowledge that God loves me. And with those three principles, I think tonight, those three truths, you can stand securely in any circumstance and your trust in God does not have to waver. Oh, I'm not saying the circumstance is easy and it appears like there's something that does, God doesn't love me and He's forgotten me, but I'm saying tonight, these are the immutable, unchangeable truths of the nature of who God is. God doesn't always reveal the path to us, but He always reveals His nature to us. Why? Because if we knew the path, we wouldn't need the Creator. We wouldn't need a God. We could establish our own way and we would, have, we would find ourselves failing. God says, listen, not only do I love you, but do you trust me enough to give you the strength and to make sure that you have the, the equipment that you need and, and understand that my desire, my intentions are only good for you and on, not just good, but the best for you. Would you just trust me in that? And that's where a lot of Christians, I think, fall short. We love God because he saved us. We love to go to heaven. We love the thought that we're religious. We love the thought that we have a home in heaven and a ticket to heaven. But we fall short of knowing God. And we allow our circumstances to dictate really how we feel about God. Can I, can I rather ask you to, to take God's character and His nature and let that dictate how you feel about the circumstances? That's, I think, where real victory is. And tonight, if we're going to experience God, I think we need to have those three truths at the very foundation of our lives tonight. And in conclusion tonight, these, this focus on knowing God rather than trying to understand our circumstances. And can I say, it's not wrong to try to f see the lessons of God's teaching, but that ought not to be our priority. I think lessons will come. But often lessons are learned when we're not trying to learn the lesson. Have you ever figured that out? You know, if I'm just trusting the teacher, I'm going to learn the lessons. It's not going to be A, B, C, but it's going to be more experiential. I'm going to be like, oh, I see that now. So, so maybe, maybe not even, you know, I, I, and I've tried this myself. I'm going through a difficult. I'm trying to see God's hand in this. I'm trying to see what he wants me to do. What does he want me to learn? What, that's good to know, but that should not be our pursuit. Our pursuit should be knowing God, knowing God, trusting his nature, trusting who he's revealed himself to be to us. And if we can lean on that, I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. And so my question is, how do we trust God? The answer is, we can because His love for you is complete. His knowledge is limitless, and His power is without boundaries. And with those three things, we can trust Him. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing's outside of His knowledge, and everything is filtered through His love for us. Will you trust Him based on who He is? Not, not just on what He's doing. Trust Him in who He is. Let's pray together tonight. Heavenly Father, I believe that these core truths 
become, Lord, the paradigm by which we see all of life through. Circumstances that are difficult, things that seem to be, uh, Lord, unloving, or even outside of what we would do because of, of our character and our 